Hello, this is Julia Bell, your professor for INFS 1010 Computer Applications. I want to start out by introducing you to eLearn and a few of the features that will make this class much easier and all your classes at Walter State. We're going to talk about getting around, talk about customizing the environment, and make sure you know how to email your professor. I'm going to look at the steps first and talk about some of the things, and then I'm going to actually go and show you how to do those. When you're looking at eLearn, the minimum standards at Walter State include you are to have a welcome news item, a welcome email, the syllabus is to be posted, and grades. Customizing eLearn, here's some things that I'm going to demo. In your profile, make sure you do not list your cell phone number. Please don't do this. Reason being is, young ladies, I'm going to talk to you first. I don't want your phone number to get out to anyone that shouldn't have that. Gentlemen, same thing. I don't want someone calling you that you wouldn't want calling you. And putting your phone number out in a public place can be a problem. So I just don't do that. Please don't list your home address in the profile. If you want to list a city because you're proud of your city, I list Morristown because that's where I'm at. I don't put my home address. I'm going to look at the notifications area, in which case you can choose to have your mobile phone set up as a contact point. Phone number is not shared with anyone. But what happens is if there are new items that you have selected that you want to be updated on, it sends a text message to your phone and tells you there's new items. For instance, I would be interested in grades when those are updated or when new news items are posted so that the teachers alerting me to something well I want to know that right away I'm going to also look at account settings if you have trouble reading the small text on the eLearn screen I'll show you how to make that bigger and choose a different font email some things you need to be aware of include your original message in your replies when I get an email it just says no or yes what was the question? Some days I get hundreds of emails and it's hard to remember which question you're answering. Also save a copy of each outgoing. I'll show you how to make sure those are set up. Lastly, an email signature. Make sure and add your name here. Whenever I receive an email from a student, it's very helpful to have the name of the student right there at the bottom of the email. Yours truly, sincerely, uh, whatever title it is you've given yourself, again, that's up to you. And don't forget to save and to close it. And also want to talk about how to email your professor. And my name is Julia Bell, and I included a picture of myself. This was taken in Chicago at a, a code.org event that I was at not long ago. Okay, I'm going to drop out of this, and I'm actually going to pull up eLearn. All right, we're logged into my eLearn. When you're in eLearn, some of the things we talked about a minute ago. Here are the general area. This is general news messages from the whole college, not from any one instructor. Today's date, let's go right here. Under the your name, click on the down arrow. Let's look at the profile. That's one of the first things I mentioned. You can give yourself a nickname. I used a claymation photo instead of a real one. Again, I included my Twitter. It's a public facing. I wouldn't put your Facebook if I were you. Not a good idea. You'll notice I don't put home or mobile phone numbers. Just not a great idea. It's public information where I went to college. Uh, and I'm, I'm about to graduate, hopefully, uh, this next spring or summer with another master's in cyber cybersecurity, so I'll put that up there and change the university. You know, if you want to list your favorite songs, again, that's up to you. If you make any changes, you can save those. I'm going to go back to the top, and I'm going to look at notifications. I sometimes have things forwarded to my email, and that's my Walter State email. If you want to register your mobile phone, you'd select a country, select a carrier, whatever that would be, you notice there's a lot of different ones. I think the Walmart carrier is going to be 
uh, through their Straight Talk is actually listed as AT&T. Come down and put the mobile phone number. This is not my phone number. I just picked a number. That's not my number. If I choose save, what's going to happen is whoever owns that phone number is going to be sent a little text message with a four-digit code that they're going to verify. I'm not going to send that to them because that wouldn't be very nice. I'm going to cancel. And there would have been an area now here after your phone number is entered to enter that code that was verified that sends to your cell phone. When do you want those sent out? Currently, SMS is not a black square like the others. It is grayed out for the simple reason of I turned off my cell phone choices here. Once I put that in and verify, I could go pick uh, when the grades are updated. Jack, I want to know about that. I could also choose a new item, a new news item is available. Right now, it would be emailing me this one item and nothing else. I could save when I'm finished. I want to go here at the top to my name and look at account settings. In this case, if you do not like the font, you can go here and choose a different one. P.S. Make sure you can read the font. So if you're wanting uh, a Comic Sans or an Arial or whatever it is you want, I could choose that. That's a recommended font. It's a true font. You can make it very small. Notice how the text at the bottom changes. That's a whole lot easier to read. If you wonder how huge it is, huge is huge. Anything else that you think you need to change? I'm going to look at emails. If yours are not checked at this point, please do so. To include your original message, again, if you say yes or no to someone's response, it helps to know what the original topic being discussed was. And save a copy so that if you think you've sent an email to someone, you have the ability to go back through your sent emails and check those out. Here's what they call the signature or the email signature line. You put in your name, and I have pressed enter here a million times. It just keeps moving it around. But first name, last name, and if you've got an official title, you can put that. Or just your name is good enough. When you've got everything the way you want it, save it, close it, and you're good to go. I'm going to go to my home. But don't forget to save those things. Over on the right-hand side, under My Courses, you'll notice the courses. These are the ones that I am teaching. I've got multiple sections of computer apps here. I'm going to click and open that. Now, most important, you'll learn how to email your professor. Yes, I know under Communication there's an email tool. Let me show you an easier way. Course Tools, Class List, and it brings up a nice, tidy little list of everyone in the class. And anyone who's put a picture of the claymation, you'll see what that picture looks like. So if you want to email the professor, you put a check beside my name, Julia Bell. And if you're not sure, you can come over here and yes, I am the instructor. This one at the top, just so you know, it's just a dummy account we do to set these up. And you would choose check the mark and then choose email. And then whatever your subject is, and then down here in the body of it, the mess message, tell me what question you have. There, I just put in something. Go to here and send. If for any reason you need to send a document with this, please do not submit your homework this way. I will not accept it or grade it this way. There is a place for everything, and emailing me your homework is not the way to do it. But if there's some something you really need for me to see, you can choose Upload and select that particular item 
I'll just go pick something from my downloads. Chapter one. Oh, soft talk guide, yeah. Attaches it here, and then you just scroll back up and choose send. Unless it's too big, it goes. Now, when you're in email and you see these little green dots beside names, that indicates the person is online at this moment. So at this, this moment, everyone that has a green dot I know is online right this moment while we're talking. Pretty neat. After you sent the email and you're done with that, remember I went to Course Tools and Class List, click back on the green notebook. That takes you back to the front of that course. Here is the news item I put out. It includes what room number I'm in. I'm in the Morristown campus. Uh, my phone number in my office there. eLearn, this is the best way to get a hold of me, is to email me in an eLearn. But I've also got um, my regular email. I think today alone I got 500 emails in my regular email account. So it gets kind of busy. What books do I need to buy? All that kind of stuff. You can click on this and it will take you out there and talk about. There we go. You have two choices. Would you like the paper book and my IT lab? If so, there's the price. There's the ISBN. Buy that from the bookstore. Would you like just my IT lab and the electronic book? Here's the ISBN for that and the price available from the Walter State Bookstore. I need to tell you, you cannot buy my IT lab used. That means someone else has already registered it and you can't register it because it already has been claimed by someone else. Back to the news item, the link I just clicked was right here. Uh, some different things about browsers, and they're warning you here not to purchase that one. That doesn't come with the e-text. If you already own the paper book, that's up to you. But I find that most students do much better if they have that paper book and my IT lab, especially when you get to Excel, being able to look at the document, you know, run your finger over it, go to the page. If you have two monitors on your computer, I've got three at home then it's easy to put the book on one and work on something else and do email on a third one or whatever. But if you only have one, it becomes a bit of an issue, I think. If you already have, there's a video here that talks about setting up your My IT Lab and Mastering. Uh, if you already have an account, you can use the original one that you've got. And here it tells you what to do, and you can create a temporary one. Here I'll remind you when the orientation items are due. Okay, I'm going to go here. In case you didn't catch that, I'll show you again. Right there, I clicked on it. It's going to take me here. I have already set up my account, so I can't show you the additional setup steps. But those setup steps would include um, clicking the orange button and then going forward and it'll ask you some questions, then you have the opportunity to either enter the code you bought from the Walter State Bookstore or accept the free 14 days. Do know this. You must purchase the materials to pass this course. You can't pass it. And no, you can't use 14-day free trials, you know, continuously because it starts all over again, and these are tied to eLearn, so it won't even let you do it. So that's not an option. But if you, we have a test at that 15th day, guess who's locked out of the test? You guessed it. I'm going to conclude this video and then make another one that talks about getting around in my IT lab.